Steve, hi, how are you doing? Hope you had a nice summer. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 303 in Ableton Live. So let's get into it. Now I had a look at a few tutorials before I started doing this and they all give you some of the basic stuff but they don't actually let you get into any more depth. So the really cool thing about this, I'll turn my push on as we're doing this, is that you can map the macros to your push and you can really have a play around like you're playing with a 303. Now nothing's perfect but it's pretty damn good. And what I've got in here, the first thing we did is enabling glide. So you just load your basic patch of analog and command G to group it. And then once you've grouped it, open up the macro variations. And the first thing you want to do is enable glide and map the glide time to a macro. And I want to do me mapping by right clicking and map to the macro. You can do it different ways, but I think that's the most efficient way to do it. So the next thing I wanted to do is to get the amp to key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little thing that I did. So now I've actually plugged my headphones in. I'm going to play a little sort of riff that I put together. Quite a standard sort of thing. Now you can imagine that is just like you're going to get if you try and program a 303, because if anybody's, if you've ever used one before, if you've used Rebirth, which I have, or anything like that, sort of step sequences sort of thing, you can put these things in, or I've got a few overlapping notes, but you can kind of, yeah, you get the picture. So it's a fairly simple sequence. Now, the first thing I did was go into the amp section. If we just click on the amp section there, you can see I've just mapped the decay. The attack I just put up a little bit because it's a bit clicky otherwise, so 33 milliseconds felt all right. You can knock that down a little bit if you want to, knock it down about sort of 20-ish. Um, right clicks, map the decay there, so if I play that. So if you're gonna get longer bass lines, you can kind of whack your decay up and you sort it. So if I'm gonna hit a So that works quite nicely just using the decay because it means we can map it to a macro and we can affect it afterwards. The other thing I did in the amp section was put the sustain down to nothing and put the sustain time left that where it was. The release time are not right down to 10 milliseconds because you don't really want a long release on this. A lot of it's you can use the amp decay and kind of hold the note down so I felt it was an easy way to you don't want to involve too much on it the other thing we did was make it monophonic so it's not in the amp section it's actually in the main volume section at the end and in there you can see you've got number of voices and I just changed that to mono because it's a mono synth I wanted to get the cut off this is the most basic thing you're going to be facing is the cut off and there's a lot of people that say it was an 18 db filter but actually if you look on roland it's actually a 24 db filter so it's the correct filter type that we're using and what we have in here is the drive now the drive in the analog is it doesn't let you control the amount of drive but it gives you two models of filter and symmetrical i'll play this <laughs> Now that's the lowest, so one, two, and three are the amount of drive the filter's got. So if I play it and I'll change it. You get an extra volume, but you can hear the filter drive and then the asymmetrical. And you can see down there in the uh, the bottom left of the screen what that actually does, like you do when you're hovering over everything in Ableton. Um, kind of like the symmetrical, so, and I mapped to the frequency and the resonance, the two most famous controls on an M, uh, a 303. Now I should say here that I've actually got saturation on, so what I did was put in the group a saturator, and I spent a little bit of time playing around with the drive levels, playing around with the color, just getting the sound that I liked. And then I reduced the output so that when you enable the saturation, you get pretty much the same volume level, but what it's doing the saturation is keeping those peaks down. So I'll turn the saturation off for now. So I'll play around with the cut off on that. You already hear you've got quite a really good 303 sound. And the other thing you do, which you need to do manually because there's four shapes and if you map that to a button, you're actually going between the four. And we only want two because the 303 just had a square wave and a sawtooth, so. Playing around with the resonance as well. Now it's not quite the same. It hasn't got that squelchiness of a 303, but it's pretty good.
Now they're your two key controls really. And the thing about Ableton Analog, it's all analog modeled, so the really nice filters on this, it sounds really, really good. So we're on the way already. Now the other thing I want to do is try and recreate the envelope feel. So to do that, we're in the filter section, and you can see down there I have mapped key, which is cut off, and envelope. So they're first, they're a bit asked about first these. So firstly I map the envelope. The default setting for the envelope is on four, that's what you load it up on. So when you change that, you can see what it does. The filter cut off frequency modulated by the filter envelope. So if I change the envelope, you can hear the difference that makes up and down. You can get a lot of really cool effects combining that with a cut off and resonance. So that was pretty cool. Now one thing that's really difficult to do is actually the accent. So I put accent low high on this, but it's not actually the accent because it's a more complicated feature on the 303. It's not one feature and it's really sort of unique to the actual 303. So this kind of does a bit of a job, but it's not going to replace the accent button on the 303. So if I play with that, oh, I should say what I've done with that, it's this key one, the frequency modulation key. So how much the cutoff frequency is modulated by the note pitch. So it changes that. Zero is the default. Now if we play around with that, with a cutoff, So you can get some really cool things going on with that. And you can use that with the envelope as well. So these put us on the way to having a really cool 303. Now you back the saturation up. And the last thing is filter decay. So in the filter section of analog, you can see we've got a linear shape on that. You can change it to exponential, so it still sounds good actually. So you see I've mapped the decay of the filter, so it's going really quickly. It's only taking 27 milliseconds for the filter to kick in the longer I push it up. Exponential. Linear is a bit smoother, exponential is probably better for this. Of course you can change it back with the square wave again. I popped a limit at the end because I didn't want it to go too mad. And then the delay module because you need a delay. If I turn that off. Still pretty cool. Now it might all sound a little bit techno and yeah, it is a little bit, but there's a lot of really cool creative uses for this in ambient. And the next thing I do, I'm actually gonna incorporate this in the ambient. So this is a relatively short video. Uh, I haven't supplied um, a download of this because to be honest, it's really easy and really simple to set up yourself. And I would also recommend playing around with it because if you look at the map, I've limited the ranges of quite a few things because when you start playing with them, if your ranges go really far down, say with the envelope, for example, so the envelope, all the way down to two, if I go lower, it kind of disappears, but you can play with a cutoff. You can get some pretty awesome sounding things, but it doesn't sound like the 303 particularly, but you can actually, if you play around with some of the ranges in this and change the ranges, you can get some absolutely brilliant effects. And if you combine that really low envelope there with the accent, turn the accent right down. Now see if I put this accent down now, I put the lower values of that lower. That's a pretty awesome sound. It's not very 303, so I limited it so it sounded more like the 303. But it is awesome. Have a play around with this. Take note of the settings I've got. Take note of what's going on here. 
So that's everything. Thank you very much. Hope it helps. Hope you're going to have fun playing around with this and making this. Uh, see you on the next one. Goodbye.